have a 1939 Ford. This old girl's been sitting for about 65 years. She does have the good old flathead V8 underneath the hood. And she has this neat little plaque on the front. I looked this up and it was a paint company, but maybe this is a dealer plate. I'm not really sure. If anybody knows, let me know. Whew. Hood kind of hangs up there. As you can see, we have the Dirt Dauber Performance intake package. Luckily, someone had enough sense when they parked the old girl and took the oil bath air cleaner off of her. They closed the choke all the way. So hopefully that prevented moisture from getting down there. And when I bought the old girl, I didn't notice this, but if you look there, the head is halfway off of there. I assume at some point back when they parked this, and that's probably why it has hardly any miles on it and was parked for so long, the head gasket probably went bad. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, find something to hold this hood up so it don't whack us in the head. And uh, we're gonna check that and see how much uh, water we have in the oil pan or vice versa, how much oil's in the water pan. Hopefully uh, not much water or moisture's got in the cylinders. We'll have to get this head off of here. It's pretty good and on there. Let's see here. Oh man. You can see all the rust there. You can't really see the water line good on the camera. Well, maybe you can. It's about water to, you know, probably around in here, then it's oil. There's a little bit of oil mixed in, but that's mainly water, it looks like. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, first things first. Oh, there's you. There's you a good vision of the water line. That's where the rust is. It's all the way full of water to the full line. And from there on, it's full quite a few quarts past the old full line full of oil. So at least she was parked full of oil and a little bit of water, probably about five quarts of water. Well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull the oil drain plug out of this thing first thing. We normally leave the oil in there, but we're gonna fill the old crankcase full of diesel and a little bit of acetone to help flush that out and see if we can knock this head off and get the other side soaking and hopefully we can get her free and get her running. On the interior though, we ain't got much to show you because we're missing a seat. It did come with some high line wire and uh, what's left of a motor. The old jiggle stick is stuck in gear, so we'll have to address that, take the top of the transmission off. And also the rear wheels are locked up, but I believe that's because the jiggle stick is stuck in gear and the motor's locked up solid. And the miles, I think it says it's either 20 or 39,000 miles if that camera will focus. It's either 29 or 30. I think it's 39,635 is how many miles are on the old girl. And she's got a 100 mile per hour speedometer, but I guarantee you this truck never could get up to probably maybe 60 if he's lucky. I'm not sure why they would put that on there. Maybe they was hopeful. She got the drain plug a little too hot with the propane torch. You can hear it uh, boiling in there, so uh, we'll go ahead and throw a pipe wrench on that bad boy and hopefully we can get her loose. Got her loose. You can see the uh, crystal clear whoo, boiling water dripping out of there. I learned my lesson with the old International. You stay out of the way, you'll burn yourself with a hot oil. And I'm going to say, whoo, that was from the head gasket being bad 65 years ago. I'm got a mouthful of that. There we go. There's some chunky stuff. <laughs> yeah, that that water has some antifreeze in it. Oh crap. In theory, this should hold all of this because it's a. Uh, there you go. You can see some of the. There's some more water. This is a three gallon deal. There should only be about two and a half gallons with how I got the math figured in there. We'll let that drain for the next four to 12 business days. And uh, all that chunks that are in there, that is from paraffin wax oil. Back in the day, Quaker State and all that had paraffin wax in it. And all that is from it degrading because of the water. And uh, yeah, the diesel should be able to remove all of that from it. 
and clean it out and we'll make sure we flush the oil pan make sure it's clean so we don't run that through there because it will cl clog up an oil filter once you break it free in about 2.9 milliseconds that's why if you're running an old engine that hasn't ran in a long time and you don't clean out the pan you want to run a non detergent oil or all that stuff will end up in your oil filters and all the oil galleys and the main bearings let her drain for a while and uh we got a funnel in there we'll dump a little bit of acetone down in there for good luck oh no oh no it's good it'll hold we'll just run down the back of the block at first and it's doing it again some diesel fuel down in there. We might be able to waterfall it down in there. Yep. You can't to go too fast or she leaks out the, the everywhere. Oh man. After much crowbarring, we've almost got her off of there. The hammer I did didn't work. The bigger hammer I did didn't work. And the seven pound hammer I did didn't work. We used a dead blow hammer first so we didn't ding anything up, but we still couldn't get her off, but we about got her 22% of the way off. I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully we can get a hold of the back there and pop that bad boy off and see what them cylinders look like. Much, and I mean much more crowbarring and beating it with a hammer. I think she's loose and I might have lied there. Off there after a lot more hammer and crowbarring, it looks like uh, we got some acorns, some rat nest, Hopefully they didn't live in here, because if they did, there'll be a bunch of rust down in there, because rat pee is fairly corrosive. Don't look too bad. Get the flashlight on the right mode here. You can see a lot of moisture's been down in there, but there doesn't seem to be any pitting. Same way with this one. But you can see around the piston, some of these are aluminum, but these are more than likely a tin mix. And you can see there's a white line around the edge. That's corrosion, so I have to get that loose. Doesn't seem to be any ring ridge, so this old girl probably didn't have many miles or many hours on her same way with this one you can see a little bit of rust in there nothing terrible i mean there's no pitting so at least water didn't set in these they just drew moisture so we'll probably put some uh pb blaster and acetone and atf in here before we hone this out but once we get her once she sets and we get her somewhat moving We'll hone her out really good. Decided we just go ahead and hone it before we uh, let it soak just to get that rust out of there. It sounds terrible because all the rust on the cylinder walls, but we'll get it sounding halfway nice. We got both of these cylinders cleaned up. She don't look too bad. There is no ring ridge in this engine, so it don't have many miles on it, you can tell. So I'm going to say it was probably a head gasket that killed this one, and the old farmer that had it probably was going to put a head gasket on it, going to put a head gasket on it, and well, he never did. And it just sat in the field for all these years. I went years. ahead and heated all these cylinders with the propane torch and gave them a little bit of PB blaster, and now we're going to give it our cough syrup looking stuff. It's a 60% transmission fluid and 40% acetone around there. Seems to work pretty good. There we go. Broke all these spark plugs.
plugs loose so we can get them out of here. We didn't really heat this side too much because, uh, well, the plugs, because we spilled a bunch of diesel on here and I don't want to set the whole thing on fire because we've done that before. That one's pretty good and loose. The old rust test, and there is a lot of rust on there and corrosion. Try this one. A lot more. Two for two, let's see if we're three for three. And a lot of corrosion. I mean, it's not terrible, but you can see there's quite a bit of uh, rust on there. That's from it drawing moisture on this side. And you can see there's a lot down in there. That acetone and stuff should clean cylinder's up. full. The rear one's full, but it has an open exhaust valve, so it's all running out the exhaust. We'll let this sit for a few days. It does look like some of this is starting to go down just a little bit because I filled them to where they ran out. Starter stuff again. Whew. See how much we moved over here. A little bit it looks like we're gonna let this that pistons at top dead center now that one's moving up once this one on the, the furthest front i'll call it number one's all the way down we will hone that one out to make sure we get all that junk out of it but till then we're gonna keep on bumping i'm surprised it's coming undone so easy So, we'll bump her over a few more times and hopefully she breaks free. Woo, there we go. See, I knew it was low on battery juice. Well, she made a mess, didn't she? Made a mess. Come on, man. Not on my blanket either. Oh, man. Making a mess everywhere. Red gummit. There we go. Well, we got her loose. She turns over pretty good too. And the cylinders don't look bad. We made a mess everywhere, but she whirls over. I'm gonna clean them, wash them cylinders out again, make sure we get all the rust out of them. And we'll probably hone the top of this other one, but all in all, she's doing- Go ahead and good. drain the diesel out of the uh, oil pan. And hopefully it gets rid of all the sludge and stuff that was down in there. We'll throw some new oil in it here in a minute. Well, it ain't even leaking yet. That ain't a good sign. There it goes. Oh, Lord of mercy. Throw this head on there. I done put the head gasket on there. Put some engine stop leak on it to help it... Uh, spread out on there and also we put engine stop leak around the piston rings so that even if they are you know stuck or almost gone it will build a little bit of compression and maybe run oh 
almost there. Some of the uh, ends of these studs are a little rusty, so we may have to clean them up and hopefully we can get the nuts on there and torque them down and not have too much problems out. We were able to get all these threads cleaned up with a die. It took a while, but they're all now where we can put a nut on them and torque them down so we can get this old girl running. Uh, that one back there, we're gonna have to put a washer on because the oil filter canister is gone off of this one. So there's a note, it's set up higher. So this one's not threaded as far down into the block. I'm not sure where the oil lines are because we're gonna have to find them and plug them off or loop them into their self or we'll have oil all over the place. I will go ahead, put all these on here and then we'll torque them down, get these plugs out, put new ones in, do the same over there, clean the points, throw some oil in her and we should have her going here pretty soon. Plugs in there, luckily all the plug wires are in the order they should be. We got the dirt dauber out of the carburetor and now we're gonna throw some uh, fancy oil in there. This has all the vitamins and minerals for these engines. It's got zinc in it. And the reason we're using this is 2050. Normally you use 1540 or so in these flatheads in the winter, but we're using the stuff with the zinc because it had a pan full of water and we want as much wear protection as we can get on this thing because we're really hoping she don't have a rod knock from all that being down in the we're pan. We're trying not to make a mess here. And we're gonna probably make a mess anyway. I'm hoping this don't pour out down the back of the block because the last, when we was putting diesel down in there, it's pouring out the back of the block. I think it's because we was putting too much in there too fast and the diesel's a little thinner than this oil is. We got six quarts. I think they only hold five, but I'll go put the other four in. We'll check it and see if we need that four six quarts in there. And it's time to see if we uh, need the sixth one. For some reason, I think we're going to, but yeah, she's a little bit below the full line. So we'll throw another quart in there just for good measures. Quart of oil in there. I put some engine stop leak down in each of these cylinders and put the plugs in there. We got all the plug wires on there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the points up. Probably won't be able to film it because it's so hard to get to these things. I'm probably gonna have to lay underneath the truck to get to them and we'll get them sanded up, put a coil on this and she should fire off, hopefully. We still have to get the old transmission out of gear, but we do have the clutch jammed in with our handy dandy universal key there. But once we get her running, we'll mess with the transmission and see if we can get her driving. But we do have four six flat tires. You can tires. see the points are really corroded, but these things have dual points, so we got to clean both sets of them and make sure they work, but it doesn't look too bad in the cap there. These have a weird distributor cap. The top comes off of that other piece, but we're going to go ahead and clean them up, and hopefully we ain't got to clean them again. Well, if she'll whirl. There we go. seem like she's getting any fire so we have plenty of compression it seems like it just doesn't want to run i don't think it's getting fuel past the intake actually i don't think it's that i could feel the uh, heat from it the it igniting there so there's some stuck valves on this side. I already knew that, but there's an intake valve and I believe it's hidden and burning all of our fuel out of the intake and causing us to, you can hear it pop back to the carburetor, which is causing it not to run because if you ain't got fuel, it ain't gonna run. We're gonna try to get to the valves by just the spark plug holes. And if not, we'll have to pull this head off this side, clean it up and put a new head gasket intake on. Intake off, there was nothing plugging it up. We got the two uh, valves free on the last two cylinders on the, uh, passenger side over there all the valves move so we're going to throw a new intake gasket on it throw the intake back on it and try this again hopefully it'll run now we did put a new condenser on it and we have it wired directly to the battery so there's no guesswork there and see what we get come on come on come on really really okay good Keep a 
doing that. Yes. water down in it so we're gonna let it run for a while She runs pretty good. She does idle. That carburetor is a little weak, but she runs pretty good. Got the cover off the old transmission, and well, if we can find out which settings which on the flashlight, she don't look like she's gonna want to do much transmission things. Uh, she's not too bad though. A little bit of rust here and there. None of the gears are completely rusted off. Mainly just really bad surface rust and a lot of scaling on there because there was no uh, oil in the case. We're gonna go ahead and. Uh, Heat that up with a torch, do some shot vac and some PB blaster and beat on this the shifter here. And here in a little while we should be able to get her loose. She's gonna make awful noises till the gears wear again because they're gonna be pitted. But we should be able to take her for a spin. We're just gonna keep bouncing her back and forth with that. second gear we tried first a minute ago uh i guess she's just that drum back there stuck so bad or that axle shaft seized i'm not really sure we've beat on it with a hammer we've pulled it with the truck we've done just about everything and the lug nuts won't come off of that wheel
one after 65 years. She won't drive underneath her own power. She'll kind of bounce back and forth and we didn't get the one rear tire to spin in reverse. But this drum over here is locked up solid and I mean solid. We've beat on it with a sledgehammer. We've pulled on it with the Dodge truck with this chain to something else to try to break it loose. I'm not too sure if it ain't the axle shaft that seized because it was kind of sudden like this where it was at and that might, rear end might've been full of water. You can also tell the wheels are rusted out. But that little old flat head in here, I mean, she runs good for setting that long and not having compression when we first started. We finally got her to build compression with a lot of engine stop leak, ran her off the starting fluid, then switched her over to the gas. And I mean, she runs good. She don't really miss. She does have a pop because I think a valve's not coming down as fast as it should, but she runs really good for setting that long. The transmission's another story. We're still working on the top of it we've got it soaking to try to get it loose but we were shifting it with a hammer that seemed to work you just had to hold her in gear but she's not too bad now that we got her rolling we're going to clean out the uh pan again and make sure she's clean but we got her running thank you guys for watching and well consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing because we got a lot more cool videos coming to the channel and well you'll see this truck again we're going to do something cool with it because i've always wanted one of these 38 39 fords